Hey everybody, I'm kind of pumped. Have you seen the announcement for the new Chevrolet Corvette E-Ray? I have, and I've been waiting quite a long time for it. And it's really cool to see it uh, being released and, and announced. And the reason for that is that I had a hand in it from the very, very, very beginning. If you've looked at my profile information on the channel, you'll see that I had about 15 years in hybrid and electric vehicles. Well, one of the last major projects in hybrids that I worked on was the Corvette E-Ray. We didn't know it was an E-Ray then, but hybrid Corvette C8. And it was really cool. It was a lot of fun. You know, the Corvette got to the point where, even though they went mid-engine with it, you still had traction challenges. For the car to go faster, uh, one, of the one of the ways to do it is to get all-wheel drive, is to get the front wheels working. Very early in the car's design, they knew, the, team, the vehicle team knew they wanted a hybrid version. And in those days, I was what, what's called a vehicle system engineer. And my mission in life was to work with the vehicle team to integrate components from my team. And my team was the hybrid propulsion team. So I worked between the hybrid chief engineer and assistant chief engineer and the vehicle uh, chief engineer and program manager and their teams and worked to, uh, I'll call it, uh, negotiate, integrate, uh, bring things together and uh, so that they knew what we could do as an engineering team for propulsion and we knew what they could do as a car and so I mean I'll say we were in very early in the design stage um, before we got to hardware when they were still designing it, it it was a fun project because there were some secret rooms that um, where they would bring in the competitive uh, high-end sports cars, the Ferraris and McLarens and so forth that we would be competing against. And so I was in the team where we were, I mean, we were working to get the C8 on the road and make it happen. And at the same time, while they were doing the conventional car, I was helping them design the hybrid car. And so it, it was really fun. I got to go to the tech center and they, again, they had a secret controlled room. They didn't want anybody to know this was coming. And, uh, and I was able to get in the secret controlled room when they were putting the first mechanical prototypes together and we were assessing the space and where can we put the, the power electronics and the battery and, and, uh, and motor. And it's an iterative process when you design a car. First you do things in math and in CAD, right? But then you have to go back to the hardware folks and, and figure out how you're going to make a motor and how it's going to package in the space that's available in the car and the guys with the car have to make the space big enough for us to put the motor and the battery in and there's a lot of strategy in how it all works uh, right down to the you know they're advertising what they call the stealth mode where you can drive out of your neighborhood at moderate low to moderate speeds just on the battery there's a lot of work on that so it was really cool um, I kind of wished I could have stayed around and uh, watched it come to production. But, um, you know, I retired several years ago and it was, time, it was time to retire. It was the right thing. But uh, I've been very quiet on this topic because I knew this car was coming and it just, it was going to take a while. But, but now it's out. Boy, 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds, quarter mile in 10.5 at, what, 130 miles an hour or so? I mean, this car just flies, and with the all-wheel drive, you got traction in the snow. It's got it's got lots of cool modes. Uh, I'm going to go here in a couple of minutes, and I'll show you a few pictures of com coming from Chevrolet's uh, media stock, what the car looks like, and how they're showing how it works. But right now, you know, with a what is a 495 horsepower engine and a another hundred and 60 horsepower out of the motor. Uh, 
It's a pretty nice package. Now I know I'm not planning to run down to the corner and buy one, but there will be a lot of customers for it and this will be cool. It will be, this is a hybrid. It doesn't plug in. It's not a full electric. It doesn't plug in. The motor will um, help propel the car and help recharge the battery so you'll get regenerative braking out of it. It's not a huge battery, but it's big enough to do the job. It's, um, you know, the whole thing in a Corvette is, you know, they're really worried about mass and space claim and, you know, how do you balance the car and put the mass in the right place. So, it was a challenging project. I really enjoyed it and uh, I'm really glad to see it come to market. I'm just going to show you a little bit of information from Chevrolet.com from the Chevrolet website. This is their picture and their uh, their artwork uh, because since the car's not out yet I certainly don't, can't have any of my own. Um, so credit to Chevrolet but um, this one is just a picture of the engine and the and the horsepower curve at you know 495 horsepower um, pretty doggone potent v8 but certainly not the most uh, powerful one they've ever put in one of these cars so maybe keep that in mind uh, but for 495 and then we go to the transmission the transmission is the same as in the non hybrid car. It's uh, eight speed dual clutch and uh, pretty capable uh, transmission. Then we start getting to the hybrid parts. Uh, the battery mounts up in the tunnel of the car and this section in the back is actually battery and wiring and, and sensors and so forth. And this piece in the front is what they call the power electronics uh, module. It's a, um, and you can see there are three cables coming off and going over to the drive unit. Uh, it's a three phase uh, power inverter, takes DC and turns it into uh, three phase AC, uh, as well as doing rectification of AC back into DC and, and taking it back to uh, DC power to recharge the batteries and so uh, you know your hybrid system is is this package going into that drive unit I'll let the drive unit we'll let the display try to flip around here and here's the drive unit in the front rated at, at 160 horsepower and you know the combination of these two uh, the battery is not huge but it's big enough and it lets the lets the car do some electric only running uh, at, at relatively low speeds and the system is fairly simple in that there's no additional generator to charge the battery this drive unit holds the motor which also also functions as a generator and so when you're driving, uh, the battery puts power out and drives the drive wheels. And when you want to charge back up, you, usually you'd like to do it during braking, but I'm sure that the software folks have some very elaborate controls that uh, you recharge the battery by generating uh, through the wheels, back through the shafts and, and recharging the battery. And it's, it's pretty nice. And you can see down in their inset here, you know, 495 horsepower engine, 160 horsepower electric motor. And just incidentally, if you're not familiar with how most of these motors work, uh, typically they have a spot right there that they call the base speed. And that's a design point for the motor. And when you're below base speed, you're at constant torque. That's why you have a nice straight line. So the torque is constant till you get to this corner, and then it becomes constant horsepower uh, out to its limit. There can be some changes and variations in that, but that's typically in, in most of our hybrid and electric systems, that's how the motors are, are set up. So once you get past this corner, you know, you're running uh, 
constant horsepower on top of the 495 uh, off the engine. And going back to the battery for just a second, it was a um, it's a 1.9 kilowatt hour battery, and you know you get a half a second improvement in zero to sixty time, and gee, a half a second in some ways doesn't sound all like like all that much, but when you're down in the two and a half three second range, a half a second's a big deal, right? It's it's a it's a big change, and uh, so really cool, and you know, it'll be on the market sometime later this year. And uh, I've been, as I said, waiting a long time to see it come to pass. It's uh, you know there have been hints to it, and I've been sworn to secrecy. I mean, I may be retired, but that doesn't mean I spill all the secrets that I knew when I worked for the company. So the things that I'm telling you now are you know public information on this page there are other things posted like spec sheets and other information so you can start you know uh, if you really want one of these you know you can go select parts and select you know look at look at what the options are that are available because they've got a lot of that information posted so here's a here's the um, press release from Chevrolet and you know about 70 years since uh, the Corvette was first introduced and again no um, e-ray that um, has its own battery system and no plugging in the stealth mode they even added a lithium-ion battery 12 volt battery for cranking for the V8 here they'll talk about the stealth mode, performance traction management modes that work along with the E all wheel drive. And then the whole set of specifications all the way down. I won't go through the whole thing, but if you go out to, you know, go to Chevy.com and you can uh, see and pick up all the information. And as I said earlier, I would bet this isn't the end. I know they can get more power out of that small block, so I'd be, I'd be betting there's more somewhere down the road. But who knows? Never know what the product plans are in advance. That's all for now. Enjoy.